Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Appreciate you in the button. Welcome to the Hot Hustle Podcast with Hank. This is episode 140. You follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hank. It's H Y M P E. It's Hank. It's not hype. I'm not geeked up. A round table today for a very lovely and respectable discussion. We're going to start with the ladies, though. Re- <laughs> introduce yourselves to the audience. Salam alaikum, sisters. Well, alaikum salam, Introduce yourself to the audience. Now we have going through the greetings properly as Muslims like we were supposed to. So but hey, now the audience is listening and waiting to know who are these people that you have on this week. Hype. Let's go, ladies. So, yes. Yeah, so, hi, everybody. I'm Brittany. Um, I'm the founder of Empower Women Fitness and Wellness Center. Um, I'm on here with my amazing, my, like one of my best friends, our co-host of our podcast for Tribe Talk Tuesdays. And, um, yeah, that's me. Hey y'all, I'm Cookie, also known as Noor. I am the owner of Divinely Her Healing, Elevating, and Renewing, and I am the second part of Tribe Talk Tuesdays. And <clears throat> brother. Hey, I was just making sure the ladies was done. Uh <laughs> what up, folks? You know what I'm saying? Y'all seen me before if y'all been here before, but if y'all knew. I am your favorite fat freckle man, your favorite coach, his favorite coach, the big dog himself. Ooh, Splash Charles. And he going to say it, so I'm going to get it out the way. Nutmeg now, nah, man. Copy Let's that, man. Going. Nutmeg, yo. Shouts out to everybody. For, uh, episode 138. Nas has been on recently. Nas on all the time. In fact, Britt is a very reoccurring guest these days. Cook, that's why we had to get you in here. Uh, People love Britt. People love Nah. They love the episode me and Nah did about the black man and what we need. We're gonna put a pin in that. You know I'm saying, pay talent Nah. We put pins and things and we pull it already and uh, come back to it. You already know. They people love that joint, but the niggas kept saying, "Damn, your man Nutmeg Nah." I'm like, "All right, so y'all, his name is just Nah." <laughs> the Nutmeg Nah thing was a joke that Nah told on his platform. Life be life, and back then it was Two Kings Two One Five. Two One Five. Uh, back. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Now I threw that out there and I'm just never letting him live it down. But if y'all want to address my man, it's just nah, okay? That big Max. nah is just an inside drink for me That's and nah. Inside right? joke. We yeah. appreciate y'all hitting the button. We only accept five stars here on the How to Hustle Podcast with Hype, but you know what I'm saying? Lay off my man nah. All right. Now, this week, episode 140. Damn, I didn't even notice that this was a round one. Um, chivalry. Who killed chivalry? Was it the men or was it the women? Cook, since you're the new here, Rookies bring the donuts. I only like blueberry cake. We're going to need you to start off the situation. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Um, It's funny because actually when I seen the topic, I asked Brett, I was like, so do I have to agree with this or is just this the I mean, topic? You can right? go, you go high. We don't have a script on how to hustle podcasts with Hype. We throw out the no. topic and you go wherever you want. You're in a safe space here. Okay. 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 So, so on, I'm a... Us. I guess what people would consider to be like a hopeless romantic, like, I don't believe that chivalry is dead. I believe that Stop chivalry that. is still very much alive, okay? Like, um, I'm somebody that just thinks, like, how I was raised and how I was brought up, my great-grandparents were a part of the foundation that raised me, and they were married for, like, over 70, 60-plus years, right? So just for what I see and what I believe, like, and even for what I get to experience now, I'm really big on you, like whatever you create your reality to be, whatever you put yourself out, like whatever you put out and whatever you entertain, that's what's going to be your reality. So I'm big on when I put that out a lot and wanting to see that and wanting to be surrounded by that. That's what I see um, versus where if I'm constantly in a negative uh, my state of chaos and confusion, then that's what I'm going to be surrounded by. But that's just me personally. Everybody else not like that, so yes. <laughs> nah. Cookie, shout out to you. I love that for you. I love that positive energy. Um, and I wish I could <laughs> govern myself in the same fashion. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but honestly, in the places I've been, in the places I go, in the places I work, I see that if chivalry ain't dead, it's on life support. I'm talking about ICU tubes, trach, whole nine. Um, 
and uh COVID mask too or <laughs> man whole not- got the tent they got the tent you know what i'm saying oh, only one visit visitors can come see it at a time <laughs> It's yet hold the door, the beeping, you know what I'm saying? A whole nine, man. Because truth be told, um, and I don't know who originally killed it, but I know women kill it every day. Um, they they might have their own reasons for it, but it's definitely uh a thing where I see women shoot it down. Everything from being as simple as like me, I still who I am who I am, you know what I'm saying? So I'ma still hold the door open, you know, I'ma still, you know, you have a good day or whatever, whatever. But the reactions I get off of simple stuff like that is so vicious where it's like, man, I see why some dudes just go ahead and drop it. Like, nah, you know what I'm saying? The whole, you know, oh, you smell nice, ma'am. Or here you go, ma'am. Oh, ma'am, you dropped this. Hey, excuse me, ma'am. You trying to tell her, yo, you just dropped your phone. And it's <clears throat> like the, the attitudes and the- I'm the all vicious. right, God. Why aren't you talking to me? <laughs> yeah. What? Like, that's, that is crazy to me. Like, I already that's got it. Me- that's cool. That's those Mia X's we talked about though on episode no one thirty eight. Yeah, you don't need none of them no limit soldiers. Oh, no car hearts and it, butters. <laughs> like one minute y'all saying y'all want to be in the soft girl era, but then you don't accept chivalry because you automatically assume it's something you know uh, sinister behind it. So, mm. Britt, you getting antsy? Let's go, sister. I'm gonna hurt you. Um. Yeah, I I don't I don't necessarily um agree with it like in in because you know the both of y'all we've been talking and it's just like once and and once again I go back to you know you say that the woman shoot it down and they want to be in that soft girl, girl era but what does that even mean you know what I'm saying I think sometimes as women and even as men we don't even know what that is so for somebody to say or, you know, you hold the door or I drop something and they like, uh, that means they just don't know the value of themselves. And this, I think that's the same way, even for men, it's like, I've been in situations where, you know, like I might, the mailman and I'd be like, have a nice day King. And they like, you know what I'm saying? Because to me, Shorty was on my top down there at 1521, huh? That's what he going to walk away saying. It's the king part. It's the king part. <laughs> king and queen get a bad name these days. I don't know why. <laughs> this is what I'm telling you, but it's like at the end of the day, I don't even think they even know because they don't even value themselves to that point. I know I've walked somewhere. I went to Wawa one time and it was two men on the side and they both was like, they didn't even know me. They both was like, I was like, I know that's right. I said, because you know what? They recognize a queen is walking through. Like you get what I'm saying? So I just feel as though that once again, like, if you don't know the value of yourself, just like Cook said, I'm surrounded by a lot of men. That's chivalry. I don't see anything else but that. And even, like, personally developed man that I'm around still has chivalry. I'm not around any men that, that just lack chivalry at the end of the day. And I'm not around women who lack chivalry or who's not able to accept it either. So to me, it's like, when I see that, it means like, uh, like you don't even know your value of yourself. If so you're you a shooter, it's, so a, it's you a issue. Would say that it's not de- you would say that it's not dead either then? No, 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 it's there, but it, they don't know no, value. No, I said dead. I said you would no, not say that chivalry no, is dead either. I, okay. I, don't, I don't think it's dead. It's very much well alive. All right. So now let me go. Um... <laughs> couple of things that y'all said have given me a couple of thoughts here uh one i do agree with now i think that i think the chivalry is dead but i think that women have killed it because women set the standard for how it is that we're going to approach you now you said like brit said when a woman when you recognize that this is a queen this is a person that i have to go at a certain way then i'm going to go at her that way but i also recognize that there are some people who i don't need to go at that hard to get what it is that you're looking to get now (laughs) What you're looking to get varies in different things the older you get. Some people are looking for companionship. Some people are just looking to bust up and down for the night. Some people are looking for a long-term situation. Those things vary, but you also understand that you go at women differently. Now, when a woman sets the standard that, nah, you're holding the door, you're walking on this side of the curb and all of those different things, then that's how you go at that situation if you're built to go at it that way. Some dudes ain't built to go at it that way. Same situation like we talking about. Some women aren't built that way because they've never seen somebody hold the door, walk on the outside of the curb. 
They've never seen protection. They've never seen these things. So you can't fault somebody for not understanding what they've never experienced. So they have no knowledge of, of men and women. Some men were not raised to hold the door open. If I, I tell my daughter all the time, you don't ever put your hand on the door. You're disrespecting me by trying to hold the door for me or trying to walk outside. I keep telling her this is another thing because the, the big one, the 11-year-old, stop walking outside of me. Like if a man is letting you hold the door and letting you go there, then you don't ever need to be anywhere with him because he is not looking to protect you from anything. <laughs> like he's not looking to protect you from a strong wind. So <laughs> you don't need to be around this type dude. Now, what you're saying as far as these are the these are the things that like I need, I'm expecting, and I'm accepting. And it's like we need more people, we need more like you. Like when me and Britt initially met, it was because Britt's doing the women's empowerment weekend. I saw the video and I said, we need this. We need to be promoting this and pumping this out there. We need people to be doing this. So let's completely shine a light on you in this situation because I wish more women thought like that. The sad part is that they don't. Though. They don't understand. Like you just said, something is pleasant, something is nice. Is like when I just said, you have a good day. Ugh. Like I already got a man. What this damn? Why do I have to want anything out of you just because I said have a good day, or high queen, or like you said high king? People just misconstrue these situations because they just don't understand. Cook, jump back in there. So no, what I was gonna say is I, I definitely agree to that to some extent. How you know women set the standard, right? But I'm also want to give like a a a little bit of a devil advocate kind of view, right? Come on, because girls. we don't, we don't have like... hey, listen. Okay, look, cook. <laughs> Look at me, okay? So strike strike one, a great thing one, you was Muslim. That works great for me. Two, Brit spoke for you. That works for me, okay? Don't couch your statements. Just make your statements. This is a safe space here. We aren't looking to argue and disagree with each other. We're going to disagree. That's cool. But this is why you're on this episode. It's because I want your opinion. I want what you think. I'm tuning into these lives on Tuesdays, and I like what I'm getting out of y'all. So come on and give it to me. Stop couching your joints and just give it to me. Let's go, Cook. You right. I appreciate that, good brother. I appreciate that. So what I was going to say, from my experience in the past, right, before I had the mindset of whatever your reality, whatever you create your reality to, to be, is that's what it's going to be, I felt like a lot of times the attentions for men would come from they would look at something behind it. And that was some of the, the constant, you know, energy that I would hit that was being put out right like I remember being like six months pregnant one time and going to a deli store to wait inside because of the weather for my son's father at the time and the person that held the the door for me I'm naive I'm just moving to Philly I don't know anything about this city right I come from a small town the person that hold the, de the door open for me and everything and seemed nice called me queen and everything literally sat and stood and talked to me for like five ten minutes and then followed up the conversation with, if I gave you $20, you see me standing there pregnant. You see me, you asked me who I was here for. I told you I waited for my son's father. And you will say to me, if I give you $20, can you? So like, that's just one of the one of the experiences I had. And because I knew how that situation was going to go, I was even afraid to tell my son's father. I waited until we got home because I knew how he was. And I knew what that situation could create. It had I told escalated. him what you know what had happened. But in not saying that's all the cases, right? Because you got some men out there, like Britt said, I surround myself by men who I don't have to let them know that I'm a queen. They already see it, right? And sometimes it does play a lot off of the mindset that people have, like what they're surrounded by, what they grow up in in their environment. One of the things that I always learned when I was younger was you're a product of your environment. And not to say that it's an excuse or it's right, but like Britt said, some people don't know what that is. Some people aren't used to that. I come from a small town where everybody greets everybody. You basically know everybody. When I moved here, that was completely different. The energy was completely well. different. <laughs> <laughs> and I had to learn now, like I've been here for almost uh, 12 years now. So this is me at 33 learning that not everybody grew up the same way that I grew up. And a lot of people's circumstances are different. So at the same time, how I was growing and I wanted people to have grace for me, I tried now, me and Britt, we just talked about this. I'm trying now to have grace for others in their situation and not take it personal to the point where I got to take it on and I got to end up being nasty because somebody else is in a negative mood, you know? 
Yeah. Happy. I'm very big. I'm very big on you. Got it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's the energy you got. Then yeah, you got that. Go ahead and nah, jump in, baby. Come on, my Cookie, brother. You touched right where I was going to go after what Hyatt was saying. Is that the expectations of men's intentions play a big part in why chivalry is dead? Because so many dudes have went about things the wrong way. Although, let me devil's advocate. Even if you a dude out there trying to get cheats, you can't just walk up and be like, yo, what's up with that ass? Like, you can't do that. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, where, like unless you really just think she a slider or a prostitute where you're going to go ahead and be like, funds. So what's going on with it? You got to be nice, right? Like, if you're going to, even if you are just thinking about sex as a male and you want to try to get with the average woman, per se, let's just say the average woman has morals and decency, right? Then you're going to have to open the door, ma'am, miss, pleasantries, so forth and so on, right? So while people make, make it seem like chivalry is, is, is an act, it's something that men, honestly, if you want any type of positive reaction with women, it's something that you should include in the kit for whatever it's for, whether you want her for sex, whether you want her for a relationship, whether you want her for business, friendship, because even in a business, you can't just be like, yo, I seen your podcast. I need you on my shit right now. Give me your joint. Da -da -da -da. No, because then it's like, oh, okay, I, I'm glad you tuned in. Thank you. But, you know. Some DMs I, like that myself. You, you, you're you're kind of <laughs> uncomfortable here. You, you're making me uncomfortable here, brother. So, no, it got to be Miss <laughs> Cookie. I don't know if you know, but I follow you. I really appreciate you. You know what I'm saying? So chivalry still has to be part of that package. Otherwise, you just a crude barbarian. You know what I'm saying? Which, unfortunately, dudes do because they feel like, well, the, why bother? And that's why I say that that's part of what kills chivalry. Because you have dudes who watch other dudes use chivalry and get dismissed, shot down, treated that type of way get overreacted to because of women's past experiences. So, yeah, men play a part in women being wary. But again, it's what you said, even with the whole thing about being a product of our environment. Everybody's a product of their environment. It doesn't necessarily mean that if you had a bad environment, you got to stay to keep the bad with you. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. You learn from it, you experience it, and then you apply it to how you want to move going forward. Either it's going to make you dark or it's going to make you cautious. Now, I don't not caution, especially for women. Especially for women, I don't not caution. It's the dark part that be knocking chivalry into the ground. You know what I'm saying? So if you just go ahead and you exchange pleasantries with somebody who's showing you chivalry as a woman, cool. But when you just automatically like, nah, he wants something. And then yeah, you shoot him back with the nastiness, it's like, all right, well, what, what else are you supposed to do now? should also tell you like to pick and choose what it is that you like and didn't like from your environment. You shouldn't just flat out be because I'm from 28th street. I got to be this type of person. I got to be this type of like, it shouldn't be that you should look and see the good qualities in the dude who goes to work every day or the girl who goes to work every day or whoever's taking care of their kids, whoever's making sure y'all got across the street. Cool. You pick and choose from those little qualities of the people and that formulates your thought. You can't just flat out go because I'm from, this city, this area, or wherever that I'm gonna completely just be negative or positive. Cause like people always assume, especially the way things is in the city now, we talked about this on last week's episode 139, available on all streaming platforms right now. If you just Google hype, all of that'll come right up. They also have pictures of Nas, not me, that's Nas, but you know, it's cool. You're not the same guy. You're not the same guy. <laughs> yeah, fat light skin, they do us like that all the time. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like just cause you move out to wherever. You can move across the country, down south, up north, wherever. Just because you're in whatever environment doesn't mean that you can't still be who you are or adjust. And like I said, pick and choose what works for you from what you're getting out of the world. Britt, jump back in here for us. Because I got one more that I want to go, but I want to throw, I want Britt to jump in with her thoughts and opinions on what we've I mean, all stated. I mean, I, I hear, like I, like I said, I hear everything that you're saying. Yes, I mean, and I, and I agree that things have come from, and yes, you can't hold people accountable for the things that they don't know. But I feel as though at some point, just like you said, that's just like, like you said, a product of my environment. And you take the young boy on the corner or the young girl on the corner, like, you know what I'm saying? And if all they seen was that their family members was in and out of jail, they was drug dealers, either, either two things, either they're going to go that way or they're going to go the opposite way. And I Copy. just feel like 
I just feel as though at the end of the day, even if I never was shown chivalry, you know what I'm saying? And I always, maybe I was shown, yeah, you know what I'm saying? My mom was getting beat on and he, you know, he, he treated, he mistreated her. I, in my mind, I know that I don't want to be treated that way. So whatever that looks like, which is the opposite of that, then I'm going to go with that. So it's just like, and, and once again, it's just going back to like, yo, like knowing your word, because that's like, you always say like, I'm, I don't want to do that. So what, I don't even want to go down that road. Like you get what I'm saying? I'm going to go down this road and I don't even know what this road looks like, but we're going to go down this road. We're going to figure it out. And I want you to treat me like this, this, and this, and this, and this. And even if you got to make it up. So I just feel like with, with me, with everything, it goes back to knowing self. It gets back to even if you don't know self, to learn self. And it's just like increase that value. Like, wait, wait, wait. Hey, Brick, give us that again. You were going out on us. You said increase your value and then you went out on us. I think she's still going out on us. Am I? Can you hear me now? There we go. All right. Increase your value was the last thing that we got a straight and, word out of you. Then go ahead. Increase your value. And I was like, what's playing in my head for the last couple of weeks is Fat Joe. When he's his statement, when he's like always saying like yesterday's price is not today's price. So it's just like always know the value and just always like raise it. Just That's raise one of the it. statements we give people over there at Custom Hustle World is yesterday's price is not today's price. We're going to get into that in a few seconds. Um, another thing that we have to address here with this topic is the parents because it has to be something if it's something that's prevalent my mom and my dad together 35 ish years or so to my dad passed never saw my mom and dad have one argument like never was a time where voices was raised never it wasn't a thing that we was doing in my house me and my wife have been ooh, eight. This is year eighteen of us talking. We've had three arguments. All right. So, if it's not a thing, if it's a certain standards and certain levels that you go like, this is the bar. This is what we accept. But if somebody again, some people be in some bad situations where you've never seen a positive relationship. You've never seen like. We talked about on that episode uh, two weeks ago now a sturdy woman or a strong man and it's like you have no concept of hold the door of be respectful of inf inflection in your tone the way that you just addressing somebody if somebody say cook and you go Ugh, you've already given me the bad energy that i don't even want to ask you or tell you yo you left your bank card in the atm now, I might not have had no intentions of scorching your account, but because of the energy that you gave me, now I'm going to bet she's going to get in her car. I'm about to take this drink. Like, but some people never got told that it's just certain ways that you talk to people, certain ways you approach situations. And yeah, once you become to be an adult and you get into your 30s and your 40s, and it's like, we're not going to keep excusing the behavior because of the things that you were shown as a kid. But also, we have to be showing us our kids these things. Like I said, I got two daughters. I tell people I got two daughters and a niece and there's certain things that I tell them. These are the things that you are to have. And if somebody is not willing to give you these things, you don't need nothing to do with that. Get away from him. He's not for you. You can't say you're looking for the girl that's garbed, but you at the bar every night. Something about these two situations doesn't equate. You can't be looking for the strong man, but you at, or not even saying that you can't be like, you can't look for a sturdy man who is an unstable situation. Right? So we have to make sure, yeah, you know what I'm saying? That's how me and Nah met. I was giving out some great knowledge. He was typing his drinks up. <laughs> Run that back, though. Run that back, Height. Run that back. You can't look for a stable man who has an unsturdy situation, an unstable situation, excuse me. The same thing with a woman. Like, you have to be paying attention to the things that's going on with this person and in this person's life. The first time that you got with him is like, oh, nigga ain't open the car door. Cause I'll give you this one. I, I mean, my wife love her to death, but I'm only opening the car door like if we like dressed going somewhere. We just Wednesday and we get the kids. It's like, oh, you got that one. <laughs> like, I mean, I will be honest. I'm not gonna point the finger at everybody else and act like my situation is perfect because it's not. But also, if she'd have sat in the car the first time we got out the car and was like, nigga, I ain't getting out this joint. Like, what you doing? 
My mom told me first time my dad come get her, like she's at her mom house and he beeping the horn. Her mom told her, you don't walk out that damn door. I didn't name you beep beep. So what would you be leaving out of this house for? So that told him, okay, I got to get out of the car. I got to come knock on the door, be respectful again, because it starts with the parents. There's a certain standard and a certain level that you have to set as a man and as a woman if you want these things from a person. But the person who's just instantly giving you like the, uh, or eye rolling or, yeah, she on my top. Like, it's not that deep. Just pleasantries can be exchanged without me having any ill intentions or anything behind. Like, <laughs> And it's sad enough that the person who's doesn't have any ill intentions or nothing behind it is the one that has the couch and like really let you know it and then it becomes just a weird situation because it's like why would you be saying that that would like that didn't even cross my mind like but you know things is weird and backwards these days um before we uh switch up the topic does anybody else have anything they'd like to say on this joint before we move on Everybody's all good. We all good. Everybody's good. Nobody's saying anything. Copy that. Okay. We're going to get to the next segment of the show, which is Get to Know, which is sponsored by Custom Hustle, which is at Custom Hustle World on Instagram. It's Custom Hustle Co. on Twitter. We do custom jerseys, custom jackets, sweatsuits, uh, football, basketball, baseball, hockey jerseys, also soccer, too. We have four versions of the sneaks available, the CH1s, 2s, 3s, and 4s, available in any color. Today, obviously, we have on the CH3s. They go just right with the drink, don't they? Um, but those are also available in any color. They're available up to a 14 for you Bigfoot brothers. We were working on something better than that. Um, barber capes, we got the shorts, we got the collar shirts, however you need it, we're customizing it and making it happen over there at Custom Hustle Co. on Twitter, Custom Hustle uh, World on Instagram. Now, get to know, because this is something, again, I pay attention to my folks when I'm bringing them all here. I see that you sisters are very big on your workout situations. Now, Cook, I seen you was in a little power lifting leg joints on the joint. I'd have snapped the Achilles and a hamstring off one joint. Um, talk to us about, because we're looking to get to know you a little bit better here. Talk to us about the therapy behind your workout situations. Mm, she liked that one too, huh? Hey, now nah, that's the paid talent situation, you know what I'm saying? Those key right. words, you see how you get that. Ooh, that's the reaction you like to get from the ladies. <laughs> You know what I'm no, no, look, because it's so ironic because when I first started this journey about eight, nine years ago, that's how I actually used to look at my workouts. Like I literally would come into the workout sometimes and be in the middle of workouts crying, crying. And people wouldn't really understand like that I was going through something and me showing up to these workouts. It was my happy place. So this was where I could get my peace and my like my time, my, you know, my peace of mind during that time to really think things through that was going through my life at the time. And I didn't have therapy. I didn't have access to therapy, you know, to be able to go and talk to somebody about my problems. Right. So th this was me showing up to these group workouts eight, nine years ago, that was like how I would release myself. And eventually like years go by, I actually had a point where I had to stop working out for two years because I had a hernia surgery. And I actually had like already had the hernia, but it got triggered even more one day because I was working out. Right. Um, and I was just scared to work out, but I knew I needed to get back to that happy place of being where I was at when I first initially started doing it. So I got back into working out and just really teaching myself the importance of being healthy and the importance of constructing my body the way I wanted it to be without feeling pressure by society to go and do other things like going under the knife to get what I wanted or to get the results that I wanted. So, yeah, this has definitely mm -hmm. been therapy for me. Sidebars, them joints don't be cute. I don't know why nobody likes to tell people that. Like it look, it looks weird. Okay, like it might look cool in the tights, but it looks a little weird. Like Britt, uh, something I saw that you had on the same vein of our workout therapy situations, because man, you had these different conversations. We're now doing a five a.m. post fudger, uh, females only, discriminating against us, thick brothers, nah. But um, talk to us about the women. Uh, we we doing them over Zoom, the community workout situations. Talk to me about that. So I started, so the crazy thing is this will be like my second round because I started this, I'm going to say in November. So I started this before December because I didn't want it to be like, oh, that New Year's resolution thing. And God, I hate that. I get, I've been trying to get up and work out for the last, like, I don't know how long, but five, just to do 5 a.m. workout. 
And um, I finally was just like, you know what? Like, I'm tired of playing with myself. And, you know, I mean, balls. <laughs> I'm tired of, like, playing games. We was going to let my- that one slide, but then you going to, you going to touch on it. Copy that. <laughs> you going to let that slide, man. Go ahead. <laughs> I was tired of playing. I was tired of letting, not keeping my words to myself with the things Copy that I that. said that I wanted. Okay, how about that? And mm-hmm. 5 a.m. work. 5 a.m. was one of those things. So, you know, um, I started it and, and for a whole actually month, I was by myself. Like, nobody hopped on. That second month, like, ladies was like, all right, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And we just. And I just posted Wait, again. I'm sorry, I just posted again. So we just started back up because I did take the month off for the month of Ramadan. Um, they back in my DM. So I'm like, yo, I'm re- like, let's go, yo, I'm with it. So. Um, it's hard, don't get me wrong, but the amount of things that I've gotten done, like off my checklist, amount of tasks that, you know what I'm saying, I've done before, I'm going to say like before even eight o'clock in the morning, I felt so accomplished. So, you know, I, I, I'm in that season and space now where it's like, you know, I have some goals I'm trying to set and it's just like, all right, let's go, you know, let's go, let's make it happen. But, um, Yeah. One thing about that, what you just said, when I'm the only one that's on this video and nobody else is jumping on, but that's you setting the standard that, again, this is, goes back to the conversation we was having. You setting the standard that this is what it needs to be. Yeah. And people always think ain't nobody paying attention just because ain't nobody on that Zoom. You don't know how many downloads you're going to get when we do these episodes. you just out there giving out content, hoping that somebody's hitting that button and they like it. But exactly, feedback that you get is based on your dedication to those situations. And you saying, this is the standard. I need to do this. So salute to both of y'all for sticking to those situations. As you can tell us, stick brothers, though, you know what I'm saying? We got to get our situations together. Nah, now, what is your therapy situation? I know we like to talk a lot about that over at Absolutely. Life Be Life and Podcast. What is your Absolutely. therapy situation? Like the ladies are talking to workouts. What is it that you would say you're going to? So I got multiple routes now, right? Because... As much as I do have a therapist, um, shout out to Dr. Bellamy. Um, I also, uh, you know, after having Taya on, shout out to Taya Moore. Um, after having her shout on and talking about self care, you know, what I'm saying self-care I'm trying to day. incorporate on that. Amazon, you saying? Let's let's let me my bad, brother. Let's throw our whole plug. No, you got us out of you all. You know how I go. Got to put the whole plug. Shouts out Taya. Shouts <laughs> out to her. But you know, what I'm saying I try to incorporate self-care into therapy as well because you know what i'm saying you got to put back into yourself it's one thing that as Brittany mentioned knowing yourself right like it's one thing to have knowledge of self it's another thing to take care of yourself um and that's something that i, I admit that i had to you know put more into i'm still working on it. i ain't quite there yet but i'm still working on it um and even as they said with physical therapy man like i've been having kind of a rough week mentally and emotionally so um this Saturday, I was like, you know what? My brother said they about to go over there and hoop for a little bit. Let me get with the brotherhood and get out there. I could have been done after one run. I looked really bad. I mean, I looked really bad. It was 420 and I was smoking layups, not blunts. Um, <laughs> I was out there looking terrible. Um, but oh, I even shit. went live. I even went live because, you know what I'm saying? People know I love hoop. People know I'm fat, but people know People don't know the dog that I got. You know what I'm saying? If you don't know me, you don't know the dog that I am. That when I decide to lock into something for a beneficial purpose, that I'm really about it. So getting back my health, getting out of this 300 pound range, and you know, being able to be here longer for my wife and my kids and everybody else that need me still here, uh, is something that I take seriously. So you know, my wife got me a Fitbit so I could track my little 10,000 steps. See what I mean? Uh, I got out there with them, killed that 10,000 steps early. And, you know, played until I felt like something was a little iffy. Once I felt that in my camera, I said, yo, I'm done. Ch- chop me, chop me, I'm good. That was but your I got lungs four. saying, nigga, this is over. I can't Oh, no, the me. lungs was, oh, no, the lungs <laughs> was on fire. Listen, the live is on Facebook and it's on Instagram and you here with me not having to where <laughs> And wh- where would people be able to follow it, find that live at now? You can find that live at coach underscore Nari. Um, I'm gonna do it every time I go hoop. I'm gonna just go ahead and go live, like I said. But all the other fat brothers need to get back out there to show that you're not gonna look good right off top, no matter how much you have in the bag, no matter how much skills you used to have. You gotta put it to use. And if your body ain't moving, the rest of the stuff ain't grooving, man. I had a thousand moves I couldn't do out there <laughs> just because 
You know, I'm thinking this, but my body's like, no, <laughs> absolutely not. You can't hit that spin move no more. But you know what I'm saying? Again, it's it's definitely like it was therapeutic for me to be out there, one, with people who care about me. You know what I'm saying? Surrounding myself by men who are trying to improve their lives spiritually, mentally, emotionally, financially, and dudes that support me. I'm playing bad. I'm missing layup. And somebody's like, still shoot the shot. Like, I missed the last one. Shoot it again. That's your shot. We know you can make that. We know you for years. That's your job. Keep shooting it. Don't put your head down. So then that allowed me to encourage other people when they was missing. So that in itself, uh, making sure that you have a tight circle, a positive circle, is also very therapeutic and also part of self-care. Let me loop that back in. You know what I'm saying? So I definitely am going multiple routes to therapy because everybody talks about therapy as far as getting yourself a therapist, which I highly advocate if you can. But as Cookie said, sometimes people ain't got the bread for it. Sometimes people don't know how to go about it. And to just downplay a person because they're not going to see a therapist doesn't mean they're not investing in therapy. She found therapy through physical therapy is a thing. You know what I'm saying? People think that it's just for when you hurt yourself and need to get back. No, it's also for when you need to heal yourself from the inside. You know what I'm saying? You're working on your body. And when you feel better here, you also feel better here. You also feel better here because you know you're more capable. So you know what I'm saying? So like I said, I'm trying to put therapy into as many different routes as I possibly can. Um, we touched on therapy on last week's episode 139, uh, episode 139 featuring Bridging the Gap podcast that will be in there for you folks. You leave your thoughts in the comments below. <laughs> um, something and that you also did touch about on. What black men need by, like I said, surrounding yourself about positive black men. Look that back to episode 138. My man, nah, man, because <laughs> that's where I was going. You know what I'm saying? No, look that thing, nah, because that's exactly where I was going. My man, on, bro, right, the whole situation there. That's, that's why this is my man. Bro. All right, now, um, my therapy is hustle. Uh, it's nothing I love more than like, I was always like, a, we got to go out here and get it type guy. When I was nine, got my autograph book. I told people this, telling somebody this the other day. My cousin had the Islamic store. He told me, I'll sell you 25 bean pies. You buy them for a dollar, you can sell them for two. And the first time we did that, I, after Juma, we ain't move them all, and we going to hit the barbershops. And the first time I did that, and I saw that fifty dollars, my brother was older than me. He was working for me. We ride our bikes, and then we go make the situation happen. And I don't need to ask my mom or my dad. My whole mindset has been that ever since. So whenever it's like, uh, yeah, I did a, uh, had to do a cleaning job, had to do regular work, or whatever the situation is, I'm never complaining. I might just be explaining to you. I got off at four, and then I had another something else to do at ten. That's not me complaining. It's just me telling you the reality of the situation because I love that shit. It's nothing I love more than just having to go. Nothing I love more than earning it. And once you have wife, kids, and people looking at you, then it makes you go even harder into that. But for me, that just made me go harder into being me already, which wasn't a hard thing for me at all. Um, lastly, before we close this one out, we go to the last segment of the show, which is sponsored by H2H Cleaning. That is my cleaning company. We do in roofing, plumbing, flooring, HVACs, cleanups, cleanouts, remodeling if you need it. Uh, power washing. We got all of that thing. We got all this stuff is enfolded into the company. So if you need it, we can make it happen. Over there at H2H Cleaning on Instagram only. Big or small jobs, just tell us how we can help because we're here to help. Now, just let us know what do we need to know. Ladies, what do we need to know? Britt, we're going to start with you since you're a veteran of the podcast these days. You know, if you have a podcast or anything that you would like to mention on the what do we need to know, Britt, now will be the time to let them know. Do we have any more retreats? Are we 6 a.m. workouts? We're going two a days on them. Let us know, Britt. What are we doing? <laughs> so right now, um, I mean, so right now, yes. Um, every Tuesday, 7.30, our podcast, right, is on IG Live. And we're going to definitely be moving that into live. Um, 5 a.m. workout, y'all. Um, y'all can find me at 1986 Empower Women underscore 24 fit okay um it's gonna be every day all right you gotta dm me so i'll drop you the link and send you the link um after 30 days you will receive a branded um woman empowerment cup this is ladies only so fellas don't go sliding in the brits dms asking about the workout situations but no but for for, before my kings though you can send me a schedule and i can set you up so we're not gonna do that all right because um i'm I'm also a health and wellness coach, so y'all can fill out a wellness evaluation 
platform and I can set you up with different workouts that'll fit your schedule. But yes, this 5 a.m. is only for my ladies. All right, Charles. So um, but yes, me. Copy that. Nutmeg now. Nah, talk to me. What we need to know, bro. What y'all need to know is that every other Saturday, let's say from this Saturday going forward, just in case you haven't been tuned in already, every other Saturday, there will be an episode of Life Be Lifey. That's L-I-F-B-L-I-F-L-I-F-E. Sheesh. B-L-I-F-I-N-G. Give me you know a little product placement. There Gotta, you, go. you already know. You already know. You're here with it. You're here with it. Um, every, every other Saturday, we'll have something. We're going to start doing more live during the week. You know what I'm saying? Making sure we interact with y'all a lot more. But so far, that episode is going to be out. We just had that last episode, episode before that, the aforementioned Tyre Moore. We have an episode with one Brittany, Miss Brittany Jones Minor that will be dropping very soon. We're having some slight editing issues, but we're working through it. We're going to make sure it comes through. You know what I'm saying? Even if we got to end up doing another one, we're going to get this out to y'all. She's great content, if you haven't already noticed from here. Um, she gives great content, and the topic was we we killed that joint for real, for real. Um, so that uh, again, also for the, like I said, for those who want to sit here and you know show love or want to get in on some of those Saturday runs, Coach underscore Nari. That's N I R I E for those who can't spell Nari. And um, yeah, I think that's all we got right now. Oh, and merch still coming this year, so go over to the Life Be Life and page and see whatever we post to let y'all know. Copy that. Cook, what we need to know. You find us doing a squat right, thrust in the gym near you. What's going on? <laughs> so you, like Brick said workout videos the other day. <laughs> look, <laughs> look, like Brick said, first and foremost, every Tuesday, 7 30 p.m. sharp, Tribe Talk Tuesdays, y'all. Make sure y'all follow us on Instagram at Tribe Talk Tuesday. Okay. Um, also for me, I do workouts as well, one-on-one sessions, more so is my twist. Um, you can meet me at the gym. I do have a membership. Hit me up. We can discuss that. Any meal plans. Um, you can also follow me at underscore cookie with two E's Dulce D D U L C E. Okay. Um, also I am the owner of Divinely Her Healing, Elevating, and Renewing. And that consists of me doing yoni steams, yoni herbal steams for women to help them with their yoni and their wombs, their reproductive systems. And I'm also a doula as well, assisting uh people within our community, especially the sisters, with being able to deliver their babies, um, be an advocate for them, and be able to teach them as well to be an advocate for themselves. One question that I have, the workouts, do we have an age limit on those workouts? Are we doing them young, preteens, teenagers? Since you said my no. one-on-one no, no, no. one -on -one situation, it's not the group situation, obviously, you know, you're not saying, hey, you four-year-olds, get out. But <laughs> uh, <laughs> the one-on-one -on -one situation, do you have an age limit there? No, not at all, actually. Um, my son is somebody that I do one-on-one -on -one things with, but also my youngest that I have so far that I've done one-on-one -on -one things with is 16 years old. So it's no age limit. I'm here for everybody from the, the children up until the seniors. So let's get it. Copy that. Y'all, I appreciate y'all all coming on this episode 140 of the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. When y'all send this out to people that y'all mentioned, like Nas therapists and such, you tell them, Hype only accepts five stars, not four. Appreciate you hitting the button. That's episode 140. We are out. I am Hype. That's H-Y-M-P-E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. <laughs>